Hello and welcome back to the Zen Born. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to make a uh, special purpose nut. Um, instead of glaring you out trying to zoom in on this, I'm going to bring the camera around to the workbench and show you exactly what's special about this nut and then talk about how we're going to uh, actually machine it. I suspect there's a name for these nuts and again I suspect that places somewhere like McMaster Core might have them but by the time I paid the freight on it and got it here that nut would have probably cost five dollars or more uh, so we got the equipment we're gonna make one right here in the shop from the end this looks like just a regular quarter twenty nut with a seven sixteenths hex however lengthwise it's a little over a half inch long and this shoulder on this side is turned down to about 415 thousandths. Now I thought uh, uh, when I started considering making this that I would take just a coupling nut, quarter twenty coupling nut, and make it from that. But as you can see, there's considerable difference. This a quarter twenty nut has a, a coupling nut has a three eighths head instead of a 7 sixteenths and even turning this down I believe was only uh, 371 and again we need about 415 thousandths so a coupling nut might would have worked uh, but again we got the equipment here so we're going to turn this down uh, and we're going to turn it out of a piece of 5 8 stock um, I didn't have any half inch stock that I really felt comfortable in using. I had some little short pieces. So we're going to mount this in a collet. Turn, turn the section down to the max diameter, which across the points on here, eh, 496 thousandths, about 500 thousandths, 499. We'll be using a 5 eighths collet, a uh, 5 C collet and a hex collet block. So let's get this loaded in the collet. Now we can hold this 5-8 stock in the, uh, directly in the uh, chuck on the lathe and turn it down to the half inch uh, before we went to the mill. But I'm going to go ahead and install it in, in a collet. And we'll leave, I don't know, an inch and a half sticking out, something like that. I must have a piece of swarf in this collet. And we'll mount this in device to tighten it down. Again, about an inch and a half out, and we'll use the spanner wrench, of course, and I want to get this plenty tight because when we go to the mill with it, we're going to be cutting on the six sides. Alright, so let's turn to the uh, lathe now. And we'll turn down a section, uh, we'll turn down a, a good inch here, uh, down to a half inch, and then we'll turn a small section down to the 415 thousandths. All right, of course being a, a hexagon collet holder, it will fit right in the three jaw. And this is a little piece of stock that I got out of the uh, uh, my scrap bin or my I hate to call it scrap. It's, uh, I, I don't like to call it scrap because I go to it so often to get stuff out of it. But it's just my small, small uh, pieces, we'll call it. All right. Put 
it looks like there's a lot of run out down here. This is where this uh, piece was was cut with a, a shear. But we're going to clean all that up. Alright, we're close enough there. Well, we cleaned up enough all the way around that we can get a measurement now. At 604, so we've got 104 thousandths to come off of that. Four hundred ninety-nine thousand. So I think that's, I think that's fine. Now let's face the end of it. Get us a good clean in. Okay. Before we do any more turning on this, we're going to drill and tap that for a quarter twenty. Definitely got to get a new number four center drill. This one is extremely dull. Alright, I think that went enough to get us a start in there. We'll put in the tap drill for a quarter twenty. I'm drilling this considerably deeper than what's uh, than the half inch, which is the length of our entire nut. I just, since I'll be tapping into a uh, blind hole, I just want to be sure I got plenty of depth. We'll take this little countersink and just get us an opening for the thread in the start. I usually forget to do this until after I've got the tap, the thread and done. What that did was clean up that burr on the end. Now we'll get the quarter twenty tap. And like I've shown before, this is a two flute uh, spiral tap. Seems to work. Seems to work uh, very well. And we'll see if this will self tap in. I believe it will. But if not, we'll, we'll manually pull it the rest of the way. Plenty of tapmatic on it. Finger on the stop button. Need to tighten the tap just a little bit, but that's going in fine. Alright, I think that's probably to the bottom now. Ain't often I get to hit the bottom. <coughs> now we we'll use the bottom tap, which should get it to within about one and a half threads. If that by some chance did not tap deep enough, we can always hold it in the vise afterwards after we get it parted off and tap it that way. Alright, now we're ready to turn down a section of this to our 400, about 415 thousandths. Yep. And it looks like the depth on that 300 thousandths. Set our zero Come in three hundred thousandths and just put a little witness mark up there. Hey, what we'll do down here at the it's off camera, 
but we actually come in at that three hundred thousandths mark and set the uh, the carriage stop block. I think most of you have probably seen that on previous videos. I'll back the camera out a little bit. But this block right down here is what we'll be setting. And of course, this is not a super critical measurement here either. Let's get a clean cut on that. We'll take about 40 thousandths to begin with and then take a measurement. That's 453. It's 38 more thousandths to go. 421. That take just a little more. I'm sorry, I read that upside down. It's 412. This, this will be fine. We'll clean those shoulders up just a little bit. Alright, that looks just like what the doctor ordered. We'll go over to the mill now and put our hex on. The hex thickness is 200 thousandths, 207 thousandths. Well, we'll just mill the hex and then we'll part it off or cut it off at the desired length. So we'll go right over to the mill with this very same setup. Okay, I'm sure what I'm fixing to show you right here is going to be elementary for most of you watching this video, but just in case it's not, uh, uh, we'll go through the steps on determining how much to remove, how much stock to remove uh, to come up with our 7 16 If you recall, our large diameter on here was 0.5 inches. We want a 7 16 hex. 7 16 is equal to 0.4375, so half inch minus 0.4375 is uh, 62 and a half thousandths. Divide that by two, because remember on the hexagon, you have opposing sides to each other. So divide that by two. So we need to take 31 thousandths off of each, each side of this hexagon. So to find that hex, to find that side, See, I think I can come down a little more here. And I have the hex collet lined up flush with this front edge, uh, front uh, vice jaw. So each time we rotate it, we'll line up right here again. And we're going we're gonna to cut. I've got a 3 8 inch four flute in there. We're going to cut that full three-eighths, even though we only need about a little over half of it for the hex width. Alright, so let's get us some, I'm happy with that RPM, that's uh, about 1100 RPM. And I'm just going to bring this down, I'll go ahead and snug that just a little bit. Bring this down until it just touches. Before we do that, let's be sure we're we're seated in good. We are. Vice is tight. All right, so there's zero. We'll come out here and come down our thirty-one thousandths. Lock the spindle good. And we should be able to take this in one pass. All 
right, we'll rotate our hex. I'm going to go ahead and rotate 180 degrees here. Put that first cut on the bottom. We'll make another cut and then we'll test this with a 7 16 wrench. Oops, I went one too many. Alright, let me grab a 7 16 wrench and we'll see if that needs any adjustment. Nope, that is just right. Alright. I could probably turn this without turning that the mill off each time, but I really don't want to stick my hand in there without spending 1100 RPM. I wouldn't want to stick my finger in there if it won't turn into 10 RPMs. All right, this should be our last side. turned. Needs a little deburring. As a matter of fact, before I put it back over in the lathe and part this off, I think I'll step in there to the uh, uh, scotch Sprite wheel and just knock some of those burrs off. Then we'll meet you back at the lathe. Okay, before we part this off, we need to be absolutely certain that our parting tool is perpendicular with the work, parallel with the uh, with the end of the work and the face of the chuck. When you got a piece of uh, work stock this small, what I like to do is simply before I put the work in, use a one, two, three block held up against the, uh, the chuck and then I'll just simply pull it around and use that to line the uh, the parting tool up. <clears throat> well, how that got so tight? Okay, now that's flat, so I tighten it back. So that should be perpendicular to the work, parallel with the end, with the face of the workpiece, and the face of the chuck. Okay, our hex width on the existing nut, about 208, 210 thousandths. So we'll line the, line the parting tool up with the very 
edge of our hex right along there zero out the z-axis and come in our about 210 thousandths there about we'll lock the uh, carriage down and we should be able to ease into that even though it is an interrupted cut I'm going to bring my tailstock up with a piece of wire in there and this is a limber piece of wire nothing nothing real stiff it's just a piece of uh, number 12 copper wire and I see people cutting at all different parting at all different RPMs for me around 200 thousandths I'm, I'm sorry 200 RPM seems to work pretty good be sure I got clearance everywhere which I do to keep plenty of lube on when I'm parting help get that chip out of there and that was the chip that got caught there for a second we'll come back in again I'm going to take my uh, parting bit and carry it over to the uh, to the wheel and sharpen that up just a little bit. Okay, I sharpened the parting tool a little bit, and I just realized too it was not on center, uh, or was actually above center a little bit. This parting tool, the further you slide it out, the more of an angle it goes at. I'll show you what I'm talking about. See, the parting tool is at an angle in the tool holder. And the last thing I parted with this was that inch and a half diameter uh, uh, brass. And so this was above, above center. The cutting edge was above center. Let's see if this doesn't do a little better now. Oh, yeah. All right, we got a little burr on that. We got to clean off this end. Let's see how warm that is. <laughs> it actually threaded on my piece of wire. That's why I kind of I like to use a uh, something limber. But I'm going to turn this around in the chuck and see if I can clean that up just a little bit. I've got the workpiece mounted in the chuck now. And I'm going to take the uh, facing tool and just knock that burr off the end. I figured that'd be easier, that easiest way to get it off. And while we're right here, I'll just take my. Uh, a little countersink tool and clean out that start of that thread a little bit. Alright, there's our nut pretty much done. The only thing I want to do is I'm going to put it in the vise and run the tap through that again. Then we'll meet out. This actually goes on my tractor. And I'll carry the camera out there just long enough to show you where it goes and how it's used. Okay, I hope you can see uh, well enough in the camera. It's uh, pretty bright out here. And me seeing what's in the camera viewfinder is not that simple right now, as bright as the sun is. But 
any case, several uh, uh, days ago, I mounted a rear view uh, camera and monitor to my tractor. Uh, I told some folks that the reason I did that was uh, was twofold. One, a little over 10 years ago, my chest was split open and uh, uh, had some heart surgery and stapled back together. And then after that, I'm practically seven, 70 years old, will be in, in about 35 days. But I just cannot turn around and see behind me when I'm sitting in the seat of the tractor uh, trying to hook up implements or trying to uh, back into something. It was really a chore. Uh, I had a lot of friends that tell me that uh, say, well, my chest has never been split open, but I can't turn around at 70, 75 years old either. either. In any case, I mounted this up here, uh, built a bracket for it. The camera's back behind uh, where you are now. Uh, I'll switch it on. I doubt you can see much of an image. Probably be washed out. But uh, when I'm actually sitting, right in, sitting in the seat where the camera is now, I can see behind me very good now, well enough that I could back it into a shelter or hooking up an implement, implement and that kind of thing. But while I was hooking that up, I opened the battery compartment to do the wiring and noticed that one of these hinge nuts, I, I really don't know what the proper term for them is, but one of them was missing. I'm not sure how long it's been missing, whether it vibrated off. Uh, this is the one we use for a pattern inside, and this is the one we just made. And thankfully, it had been not been missing enough that these uh, long enough that these threads were messed up. Uh, so it it raises and lowers without any issues at all. Now, I hope you've enjoyed watching this uh, uh, video of machining this uh, specialty nut. If you know what these are called, or if they have a name, leave me a comment down below and tell me what they're called. Uh, I'm sure I would never buy them as long as I got the uh, equipment in there, but I would be curious to see what the cost of one of them would be if we can find a proper name and I can find them online. You guys take care, and I'll see you on the next video.